This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome to ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanisha. We want to say thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listener today. And remember, we are free and available wherever you download your podcast. And wherever you download your podcast, make sure, make sure, make sure that you leave us a five-star review. We really appreciate that in advance because at the end of the day, you don't want to hide greatness. Like, do you really want to do that? Because we don't do that on this show. But we got a lot of good things. It is a Friday and this uh, episode of ATL Day Ones is brought to you by Bet Online. Um, they have been. We'll tell you about them a little bit later. But first, we're gonna start off by talking about the Falcons versus the Seahawks. Dean Pease has some interesting comments to say about these first two games. We'll talk around that and about that. And what does that mean for the Falcons as they face the Seahawks at 4:25 on Sunday? And Coming up, we got our super uber duper uber 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 special guest, and Hugh Douglas will join the show today. Uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Make sure y'all stick around for that. And last but not least, in for the culture, Herm Edwards, did he get railroaded? We'll talk about that. But first, T, we have to talk about the Falcons Seahawks 425's kickoff. And obviously, the Falcons are trying to get their first win of the season. And I think that one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting was the fact that DNP was asked about, you know, how the how how he wants the defense to perform, and you know, in, in typical Dean fashion, you know, it's like <laughs> he was like, if you combine the th- the first three quarters of of the Saints and the la- and the fourth quarter of the uh, Rams, that's how we want to damn play. <laughs> and, and I think that when I thought it was kind of interesting that he put it like that because. Mm-hmm. When you actually, when you think about it, if you just look at those those moments right there in in in, uh, in those two games, mm-hmm. they actually look like a better defense. They actually yeah. look like a defense that can be formidable for the twenty twenty two season. Yeah, and I I love the fact that he goes back to acknowledge the good play of the defense in right. the first game. A lot of pressuring, you know, a, a lot of going after the the quarterback, and of course actually getting home. So that's a beautiful right. thing. Yes. And then line, yes. line players up in different schemes, disguising things, being able to open up the playbook like he told us. And I honestly think, like he said, that one quarter that the Falcons played their best ball last week, that honestly was the fourth quarter. And isn't that not the quarter where the Falcons need to finish? And I know that probably sure. sounds like Captain Obvious, but my point being, you've already shown that you can give a solid defensive effort in three quarters, right? Last week, you showed it in the fourth quarter. So like Dean P said, if you can put those together, then that's your winning formula. All you need to do is take the piece from last week and just add it. And all that's about Jarvis at the end of the day is just keeping your foot on the gas. You want, what I think, and this is just me, we'll talk offense, I know in a bit, but Mm. I think that the Falcons are the better team. I think they are the more talented team. So I do believe they should go up there and get a W. But with any team, as we've seen kind of a topsy-turvy NFL through week three, anything can happen to any team at any given moment. So you have to make sure that the way you play, that same energy that you give, going after the quarterback the way that you do, fully stopping the run the way that you do, getting three and outs and making sure that the pressure comes from so many places that Geno Smith doesn't even know where to look, that's all the intensity that you're going to need wire to wire you know what i'm glad that you brought up geno smith because i think geno is a guy that you know he didn't live up to his his draft draft uh uh spot right you know and and i think that some people you know kind of want to not bring that up and not act like that didn't happen because you know geno smith pulling the whole well you know they wrote me off but i ain't right back and all this bull crap so you know i think that I think Dean Pease has to make a – this is a statement game for for this defense, I believe, yes. because, like, they've proved that they can be formidable, right? You know, mm-hmm. they've been getting, getting home, getting to the quarterback. They actually have more sacks than the than the Seahawks do, and, you mm-hmm. know, and they force more turnovers as well. So we're yeah. not used to that because Seattle has been known traditionally for the mm-hmm. last decade to be a team that is going to at least have a defense if they don't have anything else uh, running out on the field. But I think that with Pease and, and where, this, where this team is – Right now, I think that 
if the Falcons are going to win this game, I think they have to come out and, and, and set the tone, um, yeah. especially when you're on the road. Because if you can get those 12s to be at least halfway quiet, mm-hmm. I think that's I think they're going to be cooking with grease. Now, now as far as offensively, mm-hmm. I think we know what the Falcons have to do, T. Like, yeah. They have to be able to do one thing and one thing only. That's they have to have some success running the football in order for them to get get a win. And I think that that starts with that offensive line up front. Yeah, I would agree. And last week we'll say not fully regressed because we don't want to right. bring too much attention or or act like we're panicking here. But admittedly, it wasn't quite as good of an O-line stance as we saw maybe in that first game. However, it was just good enough to make me believe that we'll see it again right. this upcoming Sunday, right? And one of the things I loved as well, and it may seem small, Jarvis, but to me, it's very positive. We want to look at consistency, right? So now we're in week three, going into game three, and the Falcons have a clean injury sheet, okay? Yeah. Elijah Wilkinson was out on Thursday, but that was for a personal matter. Personal matter and yeah. those are the little things, Jarvis, that make a difference. Now you've had the opportunity for that O-line to gel for three weeks. Each of the parts and pieces can understand how do we protect Marcus Mariota and keep that pocket from collapsing too quickly to give him the opportunity, hopefully, if he needs to, to be able to get through his second and third progressions to advance the ball. And also when they get down into the low red zone, I love what you just said. I want to see them be able to punch it in. So whether that's CP or whether that's Tyler Algier, I want to see them enforce their will on the Seahawks D line and say, you know what, up front, we're going to beat you and we're going to punch this ball in and we're going to hammer it in for seven points and not just accept three points when you're in, you know, from really the high, even the high red zone, to be honest with you, if they're at the 20 or the 17, I still want to see seven points, but I do think that it'll be an opportunity for the O-line to kind of get back to what we saw in week one. No doubt about it. And I think that, you know, Elijah Wilkinson is a name that I, that concerned me when I saw that people saying, you know, people out there on the West coast saying, Hey, we don't see him at practice because that guard play T has been strong these first couple of games. So I want to see that continue against this team. Now, what I want, also what I want to see is I want to see Georgia Tech get a win because, you know, they're taking on Central Florida at 4 o'clock Saturday, um, tomorrow. Yes. And I think Jeff Collins, this is like I don't even think it's a question wh- whether or not this is a must-win game. Right. I think the question is if they lose, is what? Jeff Collins out of there? Yeah, you know, someone mentioned something that I thought was so interesting. So I'm going to tell you what I thought and then I'm going to walk it back. So my initial thought was when you're talking about basically 181 points to 27 points over the stretch of, or the span of, uh, I'm sorry, 118, let me give him credit, 118 (laughs) points to 27 (laughs) points scored over the span of three games, one of which was a shutout. That is very disconcerting and a quite an out, I mean, like you you were blown out. So we're not talking about 17, nothing or 10, we're talking 42. Okay, so you look at that piece and you say to yourself, is a UCF loss the the dagger or the nail in the coffin? I think it depends. At first, I thought, absolutely. But then I rethought that and I said, well, maybe if they give a strong effort, maybe if this is a close loss, should they lose? Maybe that at least staves off a firing for Jeff Collins. Other thing I thought about was this, 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 this booster base, the fan base for Georgia Tech maybe isn't the same as, say, a, a Georgia fan base, right? Or a Nebraska mm-hmm. fan base that we got to get Scott the Frost the heck out of here now. Right. And there he was. This fan base is a little bit different. So I don't know if Todd Stansbury will be willing to pull the trigger inside of the season unless it is so egregious that the fans and the boosters are like, no, Todd Stansbury, enough. So I think if the effort looks okay, or even if it doesn't look okay, I just don't know that Tech will be the kind of school that will pull the trigger there. Okay. And, and and when also to add to that, like, I think that more – I'm with you on that because Todd Stansberry hired this dude. Yep. <laughs> and he gave an unproven head coach seven mm-hmm. years guaranteed. So, yeah. Yes. I don't know if I'm going to fire the coach yep. that – 
that I hired, you know, <laughs> mid season, not even mid season, you know, right. this early on in the season. So mm -hmm. I think that, but this fan base, to to your point, this fan base may not be on the level of, of Georgia and alumni base might not be on the level of Georgia, but these folks are fired up. Like mm -hmm. I was scrolling through some, some Reddit, uh, Reddit uh, threads. Mm -hmm. See, these folks are absolutely fired up. And, and let, before we get out of here, I definitely want to talk about Georgia and going up against Kent State, but there is something that we can look in this game. And I think the main thing for me, T, we know that Georgia's going to win. But mm -hmm. I think the main thing for me is that that concerns me. They only have one sack. They put put the quarterback on the ground. I think that's yeah. the, if we want to nitpick, right? I think yeah. they need to be able to put the put, put the quarterback on the ground this particular game. I agree because the only other concern, in quotes, the only other right. concern <laughs> was the run game because RBU wasn't looking like RBU the first two games. Well, RBU showed the heck up in game three. So then that took the concern away on offense for the most part. Now you're talking about the concern on defense. And I agree with you. I think it's only the sack. And also to see if, you know, these are those quirky games, right? Where right. at the end of a game, you're charging your second unit or maybe even third unit in a dog's case to keep, to pitch a shutout to try right. to pitch a shutout should they get to the fourth quarter and the Kent State, uh, what do they call themselves, flashing eagles? The golden or flashes golden or something, flash yeah. Eagles. yeah. So, so, yeah, like if they find themselves <laughs> in a position to pitch a shutout, I want to see them do it. And I think Kirby Smart wants to see him do it as well because he was livid giving away seven points at the end of that game last weekend. So I think that's an opportunity uh, for them as well. And also, low-key, there were some cupcake games that Georgia had going into the SEC championship game last year. Maybe they took their foot off the gas too much. Yeah. And then, of course, they woke up and won the national title game. But my point being, you'd like to also see them show every cupcake game is still an important game because we need to be able to keep this level of energy no matter the opponent. I think that would bode well for them at the end of the season. Yes, I absolutely love Kirby Smart being animated on the sideline. So, um, I think that when you have a team that with this high level of talented, I mean, high level of talent through up and down this roster, I think the it's a you got to give credit where credit is due to be able to keep these guys motivated. Eighteen to twenty four year olds or twenty three year olds motivated week in and week out against teams that they know that they're better than. Yeah, I think that's a hard deal. But coming up next, we will have our guy, our main man, Hugh Douglas. Not. Not to be associated with Harry Douglas. You know, he's a friend of the show as well. Hugh Douglas will be joining us. But first, let me tell you about betonline.net. You want to try to figure out what's, what, what's some good um, um, games to get at to, you know, try to figure out the, how to win some money. How about the Georgia versus Kent State? Georgia is favored by 45 points. Do you want to take a chance on that? You don't know where to go on that? How about you go to betonline.net because they have all the information that you need. And they, you know, you can go there for reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL. You got the NBA getting ready to crank up. So, hey, go ahead and get started, getting the early start on that as well. So, yeah, they even got the uh, the small the small sports, you know, not the main main four. They got combat sports, esports, and even golf. So, yeah, they have everything you need right there for you. So, head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today because bet online is where the game starts welcome back to atl day ones i am tanitra that is drivers and that guy in the middle is mr hugh douglas the three-time pro bowler the current or upcoming shall i say inductee into the eagles hall of fame and and proud alum of central state go marauders appreciate him for stopping in today we got some things to talk to you about what's up hugh how y'all doing good good how you doing today Good. I cannot complain. Hey, that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We're still here. <laughs> For real. <laughs> well, well, Hugh. Well, you know that you know one of the things that you know we got we got to talk about. Like uh, Tanitra mentioned, you know, I know you got a chance to have a, you got a little relationship with your your alma mater, Central State. Yeah. Um, Tanitra yeah. is actually going to be on the call this weekend, man. What you thinking, man? What you thinking for your for your for your people on, on <laughs> tomorrow, man? You know what, man. And it's funny. I, 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 you know, I still love my HBCUs, man. But you know, I, hey, Jarvis, I'm down, down here in the South. I mean, we watching a whole lot of SEC football, but I'm trying to chime in and see 
what's going on, everything. But boy, we got a slate of some serious games this weekend. It's not a great weekend for kind of weekend, but we got to see what's going on, man. We got to see what's going on with some of these coaches that potentially can get. Jeff Collins, Marcus yes. Freeman might be on the hot seat. So it's one of those things. Just stay doing it. Plus, my girl Shanitra's on the call. But outside of that, man, hey, listen, we watch this weekend. Yeah, yeah, and you know the Mar- Marauders team, and I can understand it because the whole program is kind of in rebuild mode. They have yes. the first year coach in uh, Kevin Porter, so definitely looking forward to it just to kind of see what it looks like because this is a rematch of a game I called last year because they'll be taking on Miles College. But like you said, kind of a an interesting weekend in college football, and also it'll be an interesting weekend for Braves country because you. You know, I was t- we were talking about this yesterday, and, and so Jarvis and I want to pose this question to you. Of course, we know that they were up in Philly. They've started a seven-game road trip. And unfortunately, in a critical game where, hey, not a lot of run support on either side, Braves went down one nothing. But the question I have for you is this, Hugh. We're talking about back-to-back losses, something that they hadn't done in several weeks. We're also talking about the fact that they're making, to me, some questionable errors, if you will, some questionable judgments where, where it just seems like we can't get it all right at the same time, especially when we talk about the top of the order. And we know Brian Sticker remixed a little bit of, a, of that. But do you feel like these two straight losses, this lack of run support that we've seen, questionable chunks within either the, the top or the middle, the bottom of the order has been fine. You feel like maybe this is kind of telling for what this regular season is actually going to end up like for the Braves as far as title? Or no division title? You know, it's funny, Tanisha. I, I said at the beginning of the season, it's going, going to, or well, this title win and this pennant, it's probably going to cut it out to the last three. That's kind of how it looks like it's going to be. You look at what the Mets have been all, all season to see if the Mets were going to met. That doesn't look like that's going to happen. And then you look at the schedule away and, and the fact that you're playing a, the Phillies, a team that you, you could potentially see in the postseason. Mets. Right. Having an easier schedule, it's. I'm not, not gonna let two games play because I feel like you know the Braves are in a great position. The one, one thing that I am saying is Ronald Acuna and his mental state, because as you know, the biggest all season long is the fact that he's been dealing with this injury that he had last year that he had a little knee soreness and things of that nature. Or how he is going to perform mentally. And, and like somebody told me, wise man name is John Chuckery, and he said if the, if the Braves want to return to be, we're gonna have to do it with that guy. So I believe that. So I believe that what they're trying to do right now is to make sure he go that he need he has everything that he needs. And the the end of the season, end of the season, it matters, but it's not as as significant as getting these guys ready to. And I'm so glad you said that, Hugh, because I do want to correct that. When I say top of the order is on the struggle bus, not that guy. Ronald Acuna Jr. has been playing 19 straight games. We saw him just before, of course, the late scratch on Thursday night. We definitely saw him play both sides. And we know he loves to do that. He didn't want to just DH. So the last, say, five or so Mm -hmm. games, he was back in right field and doing quite fine. So, yeah, you're right. As uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. goes, especially to kind of set the tone, so goes uh, the rest of the team. And, and I mean, another. yeah, you got it, Jarvis. No, go ahead, go ahead, you. Yeah. No, I, I, I understand that everybody lives and dies on a game. I look, having a football background, I look at it like this: you win a, you win the, if you're in a three game, game set, four game set. As long as you win two of the three or three of the four, you're gonna have that those ebbs and flows in baseball. Right. And as long as this team get it going and get hot at the right time because to me that's what when you look at, at all sports it's, it's getting hot at the right time it's coming together at the right time and right now we saw the Braves do that last year we saw the Nationals do that when they won the World Series so I'm not too much worried about slumps and stuff right now as, as long as you're coming out of that slump by <laughs> <laughs> and the, the Falcons are trying to come out of slump too, Hugh. They are 0-2 yeah. on the season, trying to get their first win. And the one thing that, you know, I got to start, you know, talking about that defensive line. And I think that, you know, Geno, Geno Smith drafted in the second round. 
and a guy who's he can't be hacked. <laughs> right. So so yeah, you already know what I'm about to ask. He can like, be like, hacked. What do the he had, man? He can be hacked. Listen, you know, every week. And you have to ask a question. I'm I love sure it. It's the same thing on your show. Every week in the game, dog. The keys don't change. The keys <laughs> every week. Hey, son, get out to the quarterback now. However, which way you want to spin that story, but do they ran for less than was it fifty yards last? Less than fifty on the ground. And and you listen. We are. We, you know, he coined the phrase, I didn't call back or whatever it was he said when they talked about they tried to write him off, dog. We know who you are. We, we know who you are. We, we know what we, we got to do is let you show yourself. That's all you got to do. Show yourself. Just get back. With that pressure, you stop that run and, and let you try to play corner. We're talking about it, It's funny. I was talking to a friend of mine. And, and we were talking about, the, and they were talking about, oh, well, yeah, you know, Mr. Biscuit. Da, 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 da. I said, listen, I try to listen. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Boom. But, but to me, the bottom line. Trigger. Boom. If. if, if, if Watch that last night. That boom. If, if run the ball. If, uh, uh, any quarterback's best friend is a run. There's, 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 there's quarterbacks. That play in NFL, we know who they are. That if you get their arm, they can thread that, that needle. And they can be, it's only a few of those in the game. It's on right. The rest of them, if, if you stop the run, if, if and you make, they can't do, do it. Guess yeah. what? Yeah. Mitch Trubisky is one of those guys. Like he can't game. Mm-hmm. And on the flip side of that, look how bad everybody talked about Jacoby Brissett. That wasn't. And, and listen. listen Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, like the offensive line. Get, and they, well, we know the offensive line. That's what I said, Jarvis. Listen, yeah. Nick Chubb had folks out, out there in what's this September, August, making business decisions already. And you know, you don't start making the business decisions until to December. Right? Out that secondary, when he's in that secondary, they were, <laughs> saw that same video that I saw. Jarvis, did you see the? Video where they were showing the squat like seven, damn this seven hundred pounds. Yeah, the bar, the bar was bending. The bar was bending, Hugh. The bar was hey, bending. Like no, dude, it's swimming. just a like whole nother specimen, dog. Man, like man, listen, just different. That that had me say something. This, y'all going to cut that part. Boy, that bro had the folks out there making that whole. They look like oh hell, here he comes. <laughs> <That's the way. laughs> we, right, you don't want any part of that. No, one, no, listen, to me, I don't know if I, I, that, that boy. I'm stepping through that hole. No, <laughs> no, that. Right, let, let right, let him live. Let him live. Man, man, hey, man that, and I that, hate it. Listen, I and I know it should still is, but I was thinking this morning. It was third games into the. See three games in, but, but if he don't rush over two grand healthy, he he definitely rush over two grand. He yeah. he is he's a throw. He hit that hole last night. I had I had shades of, of uh, Earl Campbell. I saw a little bit of, mm. and I saw a little bit of like, like and it was funny when you dropped that you dropped the, the stat this morning like how the the many rushing yards in three games. Jim Brown did it respectfully. And so, Tony Michelle is the third person doing it. Like he has like four hundred and ninety something yards. Feed the beast, man. Like, listen. Yeah. The unfortunate thing about, about that position and the way that they don't last long, they, they're, they're the stars that shine the brightest, and they burn out the quicker and be great. Let, let let get that get that man to rock. Let that man run, run, run. Just let, let him run. Just let him do what he do. And I think when you do that. To your point, if you can stop the run for the Seahawks, and when you look at it, I mean, really, you're not stopping too much because, I mean, Rashad Penny and company didn't exactly have a great game against the 49ers. Mm-hmm. We're talking 36 yards, 
on 14 carries, so that wouldn't be great. But if you can at least stop it to the point where you're forcing the game to be run through Geno Smith, I actually yes. love that because the other question I was going to ask you, he would, which is not a question at all anymore, it's just going to be a statement and I'll go in a different direction. I was thinking about the secondary, pr- particularly AJ mm-hmm. Terrell, but the secondary having to deal with the likes of uh, D- DK Metcalf, right, and Tyler Lockett. But if you're putting pressure on Geno Smith, and you're doing it the right it don't way. Matter. You don't have to worry about that. It doesn't even exactly. You don't, it, don't, you totally, it don't matter. Yeah, you totally, totally x that out. But on that flip side, I think as well, you're looking at a Falcons team, especially having Cordero Patterson out there and Tyler Algier out there. I believe they're going to look to establish the run as well, especially because no offense, but if it happens to be a close game, I, I don't want the win to be predicated on what Marcus Mariota is going to do with his arm. <laughs> I know, I know what you're saying. You don't want you. I said this before the beginning of the season. And it's amazing to me how people listen. I, I analyze all the game the way that I see it's going to play out. I have no skin in the game when it comes to Marcus Mayer. I think he's a character guy. But I don't want Marcus Mayer throwing a damn ball for me. It depends on him to win me the game. That's not what I want him to do. Because listen, I, I know a good good quarterback play looks like, or at least I think I do. I think I do. I'll take your word for it. (laughs) I look at it like this. I look at it like this. In the last two games that we've been in, for whatever reason, it just looks a situation when the pressure's on and you have to make a play. He looks like doing shaggy out there trying to make something happen. Like, Like something happens where it's like a rut roll moment or something like that. It's just crazy. Dude, when that dude dropped that when nobody tackled him, right. and I said, Lord have mercy. <laughs> and he got up and made a play. If he wouldn't have, if he wouldn't have got up and made that, that play, then in Atlanta, it was straight up going to be a problem in Atlanta. He got lucky. He got lucky, man. There's two, like at the quarterback spot, when it, it's clutch time to the top, man. I, I haven't seen it yet. And I'm not, not trying to see what that looks like because now he ain't that guy. And that's yeah. not nothing personal. That's yeah. just what I looks like. like just he's afraid to throw it into tight coverage. Right. He's a, the other day, oh, when he threw it to, when he threw that pass to, to Drake London, that was tight coverage. That's a pick play. That's a pick right. play. That, mm-hmm. That's a play where the, the uh, when he gave uh Drake London a free release, hell, I could have made that play. Probably <laughs> <don't do> that. <laughs> hey, hey, I got no clue. I'm in that thing no more, but he throw yeah. it in there. <laughs> right, and listen, Hugh. Here's what I think too. We're at a point in place where maybe, just maybe, we might need to ship some of our special brew to him, Marcus Mariota. That is, so in those situations, he can be alert. And he can do what he's supposed to do and not be on the struggle bus sometimes. And you know, you know how we get that done? Let me tell you, Hugh, about this product that Jarvis and I just absolutely love to death. And hopefully you can stick around and hear about that and a little bit about For the Culture if you got time, Hugh. But we want to tell you as well as our audience about Coffee AM. Man, Hugh, we got this literally the best small batch roaster in the country, right in our backyard. They are based here in Atlanta. And I mean, wherever you want coffee from, right? You want the coffee internationally, you want it locally, they'll give it to you. If you call tomorrow, Hugh, they're going to ship it to you same day, fresh, fresh and fresh. And you know me, you are not as much on the struggle bus in the morning as I am because you've been doing these early (laughs) birds, getting up at three in the morning for a minute now. I'm kind of used to it now. You used to it, right. So a person like you may not need the Coffee AM in his life, but I need Coffee AM or the green tea from their tea collection or something. So if you guys want to gift me, that is quite fine. You go to coffeeam.com backslash locked on. You get 15% off that first order. And again, why not support local business and get yourself up as well? And it's getting to be fall. So don't you want some good tea to just kind of warm you up? When it's cuffing season, you might need that tea in your life. Just yeah, I'm CoffeeAM.com backslash locked on for your 15% off your first order. But now it is for the culture. And Houston, she want to stick around to hear about what we talk about in sports, entertainment, and the culture. Jarvis, what in the world is going on 
in Arizona. Ooh, so, you know, <clears throat> you know, Hugh, like, you know, this is a segment where we, we mix sports, <laughs> entertainment, and the culture, Hugh, and sometimes whatever the hell we want to talk about. It. That's just how we get down on the show, Hugh. You okay. know what I'm saying? You know how we get down. So, you know, today is no different because Herm Edwards, you know, he was fired on Sunday right after the yes. game. And, and then the, the funny thing about it, like, it's not funny, but the interesting thing about it is that the AD and the president of the, the school met him on the field. And has had a few words for me, and I'm just like, oh my god! Now, fast forward to today, we find out that there were people within the athletic department leaking stuff to opposing coaches of, uh, about their game plan because they wanted Hermel was to be fired. Man, oh, like, oh. Dude, I'll let you chime in on this one. Like, dude, like, like, what needs to happen uh, in, in for it? Uh, they need to find out who who did this because that's absolutely ridiculous, man. Yeah, listen, man, that like. So it's already like real talk to be an African American coach, coaching in this environment where Freeman and, and the situation that he's in, and you look at some other African American, you know, unceremoniously have been fired to be out there purposely undermining something that coach is trying to do, and and he probably, but I'm I hope he didn't bring you in there because this just sounds like some old some dirty stuff that just that yeah. just turns my stomach you know it's funny i re reached out to herm you know mm -hmm. the other keep the head up and, and he, he hit me back and said thank, thank you because man listen it's tough he was hired and i was told specifically by somebody that works in that organization that they, they wanted him to build character in those young men mm -hmm. and i know coach that was he said here if somebody was on that staff purposely Leaking stuff, painful. That is just shameful. That goes against everything that you think of football, football in general, and the yeah. camaraderie and the team teamwork and all the other stuff. That just goes against every punches whoever that is in the face. That's the, me being a little hood about it, but yeah, so ridiculous. And you but know that's what? Like punchable. Well, that's that's a punchable offense right there. I get it. Yeah, and, and when like, you think about it too. Go, no, you're fine, job. Go. I mean, but but it's, it's like this. You're trying to win football games, right? Yeah. And somebody, at the end of the day? somebody hates. You. They hate you so much that they're willing to sacrifice the team. Come on, man. Yeah. What type? Of, what type? But you know what? It does surprise me. I mean, I mean, yeah. Age we're living in right now, where people try to just to get ahead, they'll undermine you or cut you to get what they they're trying to get so yeah it it does surprise me to be, to be honest and then you know herm edwards you know he was 26 and 28 head coach which is not a bad record you know i don't know what you really out expecting arizona. out of arizona not State. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not bad you know we're not yeah. talking about bad stuff but at the end of the day he was more likely gonna get fired anyway so I think that for somebody to start leaking this information out here because they want them fired when they wanted him to be fired, like you said, that stinks to high hell. <laughs> and, 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 and not only that, let me tell you, and not only that, that so we're, we're, we're four games into the college season, he had four games on his belt. Yeah. For you, that you're actually taking the information. Like, seriously, his state was, no, the Eastern Michigan or Hurons or whatever. That's yeah. the last team you lost to, right? That's the I don't know who he played in the first three games. But what type of coach are you where from the opposing team and say, hey, you want some information on how to win the game? Oh, mm -hmm. seriously? So right. I, so it's so is it, yeah. it's safe for me to assume they had the information they used that to their to their advantage. So technically that's a tainted win. It, 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 by, by, there you go. By, by, by your, that's a tainted win. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're okay with, as a coach, you're, you're okay with that? But that's a, yeah, man. Yeah, that, 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 that kind of runs me hot. As a coach, you're okay with that. That stinks, man. It yeah, just stinks. You don't win man. straight up. You win because yeah. you had the game plan. Yeah, okay. Way to go. Yeah. And you were okay with taking that game plan, but hopefully with the Braves, they'll keep it above board this weekend. We definitely hope to see 
at least, like you said, you get them getting two games over the weekend because then that ensures at least a split of the series. So, Jake Odorizzi, do your job tonight. Everybody, you have one job, and that is at least not to go over with runners in scoring position. Give the guy some run support tonight. So thank you so much, Hugh, for stopping by. We definitely appreciate you. And you guys, you can check Hugh out, of course, every morning on 92.9 The Game with The Morning Show, but also giving some cool pregame analysis ahead of all Falcons games on 92.9. So that's like a couple hours before he, and of course, our guy, right? John Chuckery somewhere in the mix sometime from time to time doing a little Yeah, that's there. my man. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And don't forget to, of course, check John Chuckery out right here on the Lockdown Sports Network with Hitting Hard with John Chuckery. So for Jarvis, for Hugh, I'm Tanitra. You guys have fun. The weather's beautiful. I won't be able to take advantage of it because I'm going to be in the cold this weekend, but you guys take advantage of it for me. See you Monday. Y'all come back now, Peace. Hughes.